One of the simplest problems you'll come across in physics is known as the harmonic oscillator problem and it consists of a mass connected to a fixed point by a spring and if you push the mass closer there will be a restoring force that will try to push the mass back to where it came from and if you pull the mass away there will be a restoring force that will try to pull the mass back to where it came from and so this restoring force leads to an oscillatory motion which uh, is described by a, a fairly simple sine function. You can build this problem up to make more complex versions of the problem. So for example, you can have two independent oscillators, so you'd have two fixed points and two masses connected to those fixed points by springs. And those two oscillators will happily do their own thing, not terribly interesting. But we can then add another spring if we want in here, coupling those two oscillators together. And so then the problem becomes a little bit more complex because as this one moves, it will pull on this spring and it can either be pulled back to where it came from or it can pull the other long mass along with it and vice versa and so these two masses can interact with one another and they can pass energy between one another okay and if we want we can build this up into a, a into a larger problem we can have three of these masses coupled by springs we can have four we can have an infinite number if we want and some of you might go well you know who cares about an infinite number of uh, coupled oscillators but it actually turns out to be a really interesting problem it allows you to explain transfer of sound in materials, so it allows you to calculate things like heat capacity and thermal properties. It's actually a really useful problem. But what I want to look at today is just what happens when I have a set of coupled oscillators. And I can do this demonstration using a set of metronomes. You might be familiar with metronomes from school. It's just one of these things that they use to keep time in music classes. And the nice thing about a metronome is that the frequency of the oscillation is really well controlled and it's adjustable too, I can set it to whatever I want. So I've got five of these metronomes here and they're all set to exactly the same frequency, 160 beat per, beats per minute. Makes the problem simple, you can change the frequencies and solve it if you want but you get slightly different behaviours. And so they're all sitting on this wooden board and if I just leave this wooden board on the table, those oscillators will tick independent of one another. Okay, so you can imagine that what I've got is just a set of oscillators running on their own springs with no coupling between one oscillator and another. And so they will all tick with the same frequency, because I've set the same frequency, but their phase relationship, in other words, where one is relative to another in its, in its sequence, will be different and it will stay exactly the same. Okay, so this one might be at its maximum and this one might be at its minimum and this might be a quarter off its minimum and that relationship between them will stay the same as long as I leave them running on the bench and I'll show you that in a minute. I can couple them together really easily by taking the board and sitting it on a pair of rolling pins. Okay, in which case the board can now shake and so what happens is a metronome ticking will shake the board and that shaking of the board will shake the metronome next to it and by doing that the metronomes can couple to one another okay and so we can have we can go from having a set of five independent oscillators to a set of five coupled oscillators and so I'll let this thing run and we'll see an interesting behavior emerge and then we'll come back and explain what's happening so let's just start our metronomes up and I don't care about the phase relationship between them so I can just start them as I see fit If anything, this one's a little too in phase, so I might stop it and just knock it off, just for the sake of demonstration. And so you can see they're now all ticking. They're all ticking at the same frequency, but they're at slightly different phases. And so you hear this sort of bunch of clicks, each coming from one of the metronomes. Let me just leave them for a few seconds, and you can see that nothing much changes about the system. They're all just happily ticking away. So now I'll couple them together and we'll see if we can get this thing to work a little bit fiddly because you need the, uh, to have a really free rolling motion on your table. But uh, let's sit it up and see how it goes. So I'll set it up on the rolling pins, kind of finding a position where it's free to roll. And you can see if you look really carefully that the table actually moves a little bit. And that 
that's the metronome is now starting to shake that table. So let's just watch it now and see what happens. And so there we are, we've now reached the final solution for this system, which has all of the metronomes synchronized, okay? And so they now all have exactly the same phase, they all reach their maximum point at the same time, and you only hear one click, right? It sounds like an army marching down the road. What you might have heard along the way is that sort of background clicking sound has sort of changed, it's gone from being a just general clicks to sometimes being almost in phase and we even saw if you watch back four of these came into phase and then the one at the end was sitting out right and then they sort of broke away again and then they all came in together okay and this is sort of as they gradually transfer energy between one another to come to this common um, phase solution and this ends up being the lowest energy state for the uh, couple oscillator system, it's something known as a symmetric normal mode and it has all of the oscillators ticking precisely in phase and because it's the lowest energy solution it's really robust so I can give this thing a bit of a kick now and you see it will quite happily come back to that same ticking solution again and I can even take one of the oscillators and interfere with it and just knock it out of phase and you see it will come back to the same synchronization again after a short period of time. And it's uh, kind of useful as well if you want to synchronize things that are at the same frequency, right? The original experiment was done using grandfather clocks. Um, and it was used to synchronize those. Um, so you can do it for fairly large oscillators and you can do it for fairly small oscillators like these metronomes. So there's one last really interesting thing that you can do here. If I speed these metronomes right up you'll be able to see it. What I'll do is I'll start four of them and I'll let them come to being synchronized first. Okay, And then I'll start the last one up and I'll start it deliberately out of phase and if you watch it you'll notice that it always ticks at the same speed the frequency is fixed but the amplitude of the oscillation will vary as it tries to come in synchronization with the other ones okay so sometimes it will swing with a very big amplitude and sometimes it'll swing with a very small amplitude and it will use that as a way of sort of transferring its energy so that it comes into phase with the others and then it will come to the same amplitude as all the other oscillators. So let's fire this up and watch it and see if we can see it happen. So I'll just synchronize them first, just the first four. So I might do it with the middle one. That's the first four synchronized. You notice the middle one's wobbling just a little bit. But now I'll start the middle one up, and if you watch really carefully, just look at its amplitude as we uh, as it comes into synchronization with the others. Its amplitude is getting really small now. Remember, I started it with a big swing. getting bigger again. And now it's getting smaller again. Almost not oscillating at all. And now it comes into synchronization and the oscillation will get the amplitude will get a little bit bigger and it will come to the same amplitude as all the other oscillators.